What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. It's Tuesday. It is. January 21st. <laughs> and I'm Paul Wontor. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And one of the greats of the stage <gasps> is here today yes. as a guest, Mr. Uh, Michael Yuri. Back on Broadway and Grand Horizons. This guy, I mean, he's always working. He's the best. Always he's fantastic. The best. Yeah. So happy he's here. We're going to get to him, but first, today's top five. We started the day off with a little bit of a cast-changing announcement. That's right. Matt McGrath has joined the cast of Girl from the North Country. Um, he is replacing David Patu, who had to leave the production due to a scheduling conflict. But Matt McGrath is, of course, absolutely wonderful. You may have seen him on Broadway in Cabaret, A Streetcar Named Desire, Peter Pan, and or working. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he's been on screen in Pose and Modern Family. He's super talented. He will be playing the role of Reverend Marlowe. I don't know what that means because I haven't seen the show yet. <laughs> so, but it sounds like a great role. Um, he, uh, the musical is scheduled to begin previews on February seventh. That's very soon, and it will officially open at the Belasco Theater on March fifth. I'm very excited for this. This was my um, looking forward to pick uh, for 2020. Do you know who Matt McGrath played in Streetcar Named Desire? I don't think I He do. played the newspaper boy opposite Jessica Lange. Oh. Which had okay. to be terrifying. That had to, no <laughs> kidding. I mean, like, yeah. That's yeah. Amazing, yeah. That's amazing, that though. All right. Well, congrats, Matt McGrath. Can't wait to see you. Yes. And this genie is coming back to Broadway. We're talking about Michael James Scott. Two Wonderful. first names, yes. but one's a middle name. <laughs> yeah. uh, we love him. He's fantastic. He was the GD um, on Broadway and in Australia. He and was, yeah. All over the place. All over. And he's coming back into the Broadway production, replacing Major Attaway, who plays his final performance February 16th. Michael James Scott is starting, I don't have a start date here, but I'm assuming that week. Uh, yeah. He's also been, he was in something rotten. Mm -hmm. Remember how good he was in that? So hilarious. Book of Mormon yes. for mm -hmm. a long time. Mamma Mia hair. He's fantastic. He's one of the greats. Uh, Aladdin is in good hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this yet continues to show off our theory that Netflix is obsessed with Broadway. It's true. So uh, we knew Bradley Cooper was working on this Leonard Bernstein yes. biopic. For, we heard about it a while ago. Um, but now Netflix has acquired the rights to it. They're going to be taking the same thing that they're doing with The Irishman right now. Like They're going to be the ones. Marriage uh, Story. They're having a good Oscar yes, camp. Yes, absolutely. Oscar time. The two popes. Um, so Bradley Cooper will direct, write, and star as wow. Leonard Bernstein himself, just similar to like what he did with A Star is Born. Um, Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg are on board as producers of this pick now as well, which is really exciting. Uh, he's also co-writing, Cooper is co-writing the script with the Oscar-winning spotlight writer Josh Singer. Mm. Um, it is expected to span 30 years, uh, recalling the story of the marriage between Bernstein and his wife Felicia Montalegre. Ooh, <laughs> oh my, look at that. Uh, <laughs> In case you don't know, Bernstein. Is there any chance Daphne Urban Vega can play? <gasps> oh, I'm just throwing it out there. Yes, I just yes. That. <laughs> do that, please, Bradley. Um, uh, Leonard Bernstein, of course, wrote uh, the score for West Side Story. Did he? Also, Wonderful Town, yeah. Candide, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, On the Town, Peter Pan, and more. Um, Bradley Cooper, Audience Choice Award winner Bradley Cooper, received a Tony nominee for his turn as John Merrick in The Elephant Man. Of course, you also know him from all of his big Oscar movies. Um, very and two Broadway.com Audience Choice I Awards. Did. I said Broadway.com Audience Choice winner Bradley Cooper. Yes, he was he, he when he got his first one. He said it was the first time he ever won anything. Uh, that's right. So it he all started here. Bradley. You're welcome, Bradley. You're welcome, Bradley. <laughs> Can't wait for this. Yes, and we're so excited for Donmar Warehouse's upcoming season, which will include In the Blood from Susan Laurie Parks. Mm. Yes. yes. So this is artistic director Michael Longhurst's second season, mm -hmm. and it's kicking off with In the Blood by Pulitzer Prize winner Parks. Um, and Ellen McDougall will direct the staging, and it's a it's her take on Scarlet Letter. Ooh, Check it out; it's a very interesting yeah. take. And then Steve Waters, the Contingency Plan, co-directed by Caroline Stanbice and Chelsea Walker, is next, and that's set as glaciologist. I, Wilp, I should have practiced. Oh, glaciologist. Glaciologist. I've never heard of, never heard of that, that before. A, a glaciologist named Will Paxton, who returns from Antarctica to his home to his reclusive parents. Hmm. Um, and then we have Nina Segel's Assembly, 
which is a response to the contingency plan. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. This is really thought out. And that emphasizes <laughs> themes of working together to save the environment. Come on. And then uh, force, ma ma force majeure. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. um, it's a version of the film. It's a stage version of the film. Uh, adapted by Tim Price and directed by Longhurst, will close out the season. So Ooh, wow. it seems like a very highbrow, interwoven season. Yes. season. Yeah, I the, appreciate the planet's the effort. dying is basically what they're all getting yes. at here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And congrats to this off-Broadway comedy because it just got another extension. We are talking about George Eastman's Harry Townsend's Last Stand. Um, that is currently uh, directed by Karen Carpenter. It began previews in November. It opened in December. You now have until April 5th wow. Wow. to see its limited engagement. It centers on an 85-year-old Harry Townsend, uh, played by Len Cariou. Very exciting. A widower living alone when his son, Alan, Tony nominee Craig Bierko, comes home after an 18-month absence. Um, it is playing at New York City Center Stage 2. So you have until April 5th to check that out. It's great comedy. Hey, also, Ryan. Yes, sir. Who is on the new ClubRoy.com? It's Megan Pacerno. Pacerno. Yes. You can say <laughs> I don't that know if it's supposed to be. I just what a wonderful Did I start last that? Week. I don't yes. know. I, I think you know. did. I picked it up somewhere. Uh, yeah. She's Christine Daae, of course. She, she was just is. here at Live at Five a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. And she sings uh, The Touching, mm -hmm. wishing you were somehow here again. And she dedicates it to Hal Prince. Which... And it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, so it's amazing. Also, Emoji Land opened. We talked to Leslie Margarita here on Friday. Friday. That uh, that show is open, and we have photos from their opening night as well as production photos. And tonight, a soldiers' play opens That's on right, Broadway. It is. This happy evening. opening, yes, happy opening to all of them. All right, I'm gonna get you out of here. You know what else opens this week? Grand <gasps> Horizon. Grand so Horizon. To one of the stars. Does. That's right. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, you guys, we got Michael Yuri here with us in the studio today. He can currently be seen in Bestival's Broadway debut play, Grand Horizons, that he did earlier this summer. And it, yes, it's set to open this week on Thursday, January 23rd. He made his Broadway debut and how to succeed in business without really trying. He was just in Torch Song last season, but most recently he could have been seen in a bright room called Day, which he had to leave because it kept getting extended to come to Grand Horizons. He's a very busy guy. Make sure you guys follow... Oh, wait. No, very important. He was in Ugly Betty on screen, you guys. <laughs> he was also in The Good Wife, Younger, a whole lot more. You can follow him on social media at Michael Yuri Likes It. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below, and please welcome Michael and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. Thank you. Hello, oh, Michael. Nice introduction. Thank you so much. How are you? I am very well. Thank the hair you. Looks good. Does it? Yeah. Thanks to Emilio. I just uh, I wore a hat here. Emilio Madrid fixed your hair. Yes. Well, he gave me the product to fix my oh, hair. Oh, so it's fresh. Yeah. How that are you? Are you feeling like your, fresh? Your hair is terrific too. Thank you. At attention. High and dry. <laughs> Hi and dry. <laughs> uh, how are things? You're back on the Broadway. Back on Broadway. It's you were, so nice. You were on the off Broadway. You you balance. You, you, you oh, work yeah. all over the place. You you work. I go wherever they let me. Well, they're letting you go a lot of places. <laughs> they're letting you do a lot of great things. Yeah, it, it has been a really crazy few months though. Doing Bright Room Call Day yeah. and Grand Horizons. I, for three weeks, I was doing double duty, which meant I would rehearse all day in Midtown at Grand Horizons, and then I would hop on my bike and go down to the public because I didn't trust the subway. And in fact, one day it was raining and I was late because of the subway. <sighs> and yeah. then I would do Bright Room Call Day, which was three hours. It was yes. a, not a yeah. short show. And I got so good at doing double duty okay. that I could take a nap during Bright Room Call Day. <laughs> During the show, <laughs> while I was off stage, how long of a nap was that? <laughs> about a fifteen-minute nap. Okay. During well. the last scene of Act One, so I, I was I, I left the stage about twenty minutes before <laughs> intermission, and, and 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 everybody in my dressing room, I shared a dressing room with four other guys, and, yeah. and they were all on stage, pretty much. Okay. Or they were somewhere. They weren't in the dressing room. Okay. So if I raced up, changed my clothes into my next look, which was much cozier, cl turned out the lights, put on a rainstorm, laid down. I could fall asleep for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then when they all came in for intermission, I would wake back up. And then I still had a good half hour before I was back on. Wow. Yeah, Kushner's good like that. He gives you lots of, you're on a lot, but you're off a lot, too. Yeah, Tony Kushner, not Tony. Jared Kushner. Tony Kushner. Uh, Tony Kushner. <laughs> not great Jared. Uh, so, now you're in Best Wall Land. <laughs> yes. Is that a place? Wall Land. Um, I'm in Wall Land, which is not, not unlike Emoji Land. <laughs> um, except sadder. <laughs> it's only those sadder emojis. So but, tell everyone about this, this oh, Grand it's a, Horizon. It's such a beautiful play. Bess Wall is such an incredible writer. 
It is about um, a husband and wife who've been married for 50 years. Fancy actors, by Fancy the way. actors play them, James Cromwell and the legendary Jane Alexander. Legendary. Both have not been on Broadway in many years. I know. I did that math recently. I mean, yeah. Jamie hasn't been on Broadway in like Late 90s? 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and he yeah. was like a spear carrier or something last time he was on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, he's like, you know, a giant movie star. And you get to play their son. I play their son with Ben McKenzie. Right. We're their sons. And they decide that they're going to get a divorce. Right. And Ben and I swoop in and try and stop it. And and it becomes about, uh, uh, about communicating mm. a, in a family that has never really communicated before. And it's quite beautiful. And it's one of the fast, most fascinating things about doing Bright Room and Grand Horizons at the same time was Tony Kushner writes plays about people who are, are are fighting for something and they use their language to get it. And so it's a play about people who tell the truth and say what they mean and mean what they say. Mm -hmm. And Bess's play is about people who don't say what they mm. mean and don't mean what they say. And you have to, so, you, so it's like, so Lee Silverman, our incredible director, yeah. and Bess and, and us would just dig and dig and dig and find what the truth was and then put everything back on top so that and the audiences are loving it, and they're really getting it. The, you know, there's such a fear when you're playing a character that doesn't tell the truth that the audience isn't going to know the truth. Mm. But they're very clever, and they're <laughs> figuring it out. You, you, um, I love how you talk about a play. You can tell you're a director too, because oh. you, you, you just, you know, you, you have such a great analytical mind. Oh, thank you. Right? I mean, do you like digging into plays like that? Oh, and I love sort of, it. Yeah. yeah, I love doing that. I. Uh, are you I, sad I, that the rehearsal process is about to end? I, 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 I think I would be if I hadn't been. Do, doing both like right. I'm ready I'm ready to have some time off I'm right. ready to sure. like you sleep it. in and stuff but but I mean it was fascinating working on this play we spent you know all the time in the rehearsal room and then we got in front of an audience and it became a whole different beast mm -hmm. you know a play that has laughs as this one does it's a it's a completely different beast once once right. you start running it and and we got laughs and then it became about okay which laughs do we want and which ones do mm. we want to go away because right. how and how do we get closer and closer to the truth and how do we mine deeper and deeper to what is really happening and 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 less about what we're what we put on what, what you know like the bells and whistles which is sometimes sad you know sometimes you, you come up with something that's really funny and you want to keep it but you have to let it go you have to kill your darlings as they say <laughs> and um Lee's really good at killing darlings. <laughs> her own, too. Her own darlings, too. Now, your character is, uh, he's show folk, isn't he? <laughs> he is show folk. He's of the theater world. Yes. Brian French <laughs> is a high school drama teacher. Ah. And he has abandoned his, his kids um, to come and take care of his parents. And uh, he has had, had to put on hold the production of... The Crucible hmm. that he's directing. Is, with, is that a, that was a meaty production? A meaty was production. Yes, he's he 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 has dealt his triple cast every role. <laughs> okay, um, and he's added extra girls in the forest around the cauldron. He's sure. added extra spectators in the courtroom. There's a court stenographer, and there are all, all over two hundred kids in the show. And while that is a source of of levity in the play, I think it's quite beautiful. And Brian, um, I think is is kind of a hero and uh, there was a point in my life before I wanted to be an actor where I really wanted to be a drama teacher mm. and I kind of like to think that if I had become a drama teacher I'd be like Brian and Brian has his flaws I mean he's certainly you know he's certainly got, like a complicated individual uh -huh. but I think he's a really good teacher and um, and so I'm really proud and, and some uh, one of the things that we have worked towards uh, in the preview process and in Bess's rewrites is making Brian a uh, uh, as a as a as a professional, more a more serious individual mm. and and, a, and less of uh, less of sort of a joke. Got it. Because it's easy to you know say he teaches drama, he's doing the Crucible, he has two hundred kids. That's funny, and it is funny. Yeah, but it's also quite beautiful. Well, what and, is and, it? What do you think it actually says about him? Well, I think it says it. You know, I, I, I he says in the play, I don't want anyone to be disappointed. Mm. He says it was painful in high school when you auditioned for the school play and didn't get cast, and I believe that. That, you know, not everyone who tries to be in plays in high school really wants to be in plays for a living or right. really will be. Uh, right. and, and not everybody who's in plays in high school will be in plays for right. a living. It's just a good opportunity to work with people and, and make something. And it doesn't just, doesn't just create good actors or directors or teachers. It creates good theater goers. Mm. And the more people that you put in the play... The more people who will come see the play, the more people that are in the play that will then go and see plays on their own. I just think it's, I think it's kind of wonderful that 
that he has a theater department with 200 kids anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> right. That's a lot right. of kids. It's a miracle. When I was in high school, we did Fiddler on the Roof, and my teacher cast, I think, everyone that auditioned. And, and we did not have enough boys. And I, I didn't want to be on stage, because I didn't know I wanted to be. And I was the okay. assistant director. But of course, we didn't have enough boys, so I ended up on stage. And I was Sasha the Russian. Wow. You know, at the end of the first act, when they come in and they trash the wedding? Yeah. That was all me. <laughs> <laughs> that was all of the Russians that trashed the wedding. <laughs> every, all of them. Every single one of them. That was me. But, um, but the, because, because we didn't have any girls to play boys, which okay. in hindsight, maybe we should have, but we didn't. So when we would sing the papas and the mamas, you know, at the beginning, yeah. it was like the papas and then the mamas. <laughs> so like, like a dozen women to like three dads. So was Sasha your first time on stage? Yeah. That was your first time. Sasha was my first part. Okay. And you didn't, did you get the, were you bit then by the on Not stage then. Thing? No, okay. I, I, not that. I, I was bit by the theater then. I love doing it so much. And that, yeah. sh that play is still one of the greatest pieces of theater I think ever and yeah. um, but it was the next year when we were doing the Curious Savage which is a what is that high, oh you don't know the Curious I'm Savage sorry, oh it's me. a high school staple it's by <laughs> something Jonathan Patrick or something like that and it's it's a comedy a you know like a comedy about about uh, 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 not unlike Grand Horizons it's about these three kids who who have put their mother in in like a, a sort of an, 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 an a home for the crazy, Ooh. and turns out their mother is like cleverer than the rest of them. Oh, yeah, it's funny that it's a high school staple given that there's all these older characters. But I played her evil son, wow. and I got and I'll never forget it. I got my first laugh. I'm, I, I remember wow. ex I remember the line. I remember what everything the about it. the line was why. <laughs> Good one. Okay. It shows you what a ham I am that I got a laugh <laughs> saying the word why. <laughs> but uh, it was it was why and it, and I got a big laugh and I was like oh oh yeah I'll be doing this again right. <laughs> so I want to ask you also Drew Drogi. Drew Drogi's show Drew is coming. Yeah. yeah. So you um, you directed his last show. Correct. I I'm gonna say the title wrong. Bright. Wait, what is it? Bright colors and bold patterns. Why do I always mix that up? Because you're you keep hearing bright room cold day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bright, Thank you. I do it too. Yes. Bright colors and bold patterns, right. which we did at Soho Playhouse. First we did it at Barrow Street. Yes. Then we did it at Soho yeah, it Playhouse. Yeah, yeah. Big hit. Filmed and then and we filmed it for Broadway dot com. Yeah, Broadway yeah. HD. Yeah, sure, we'll take it. And <laughs> and yeah. um, Jeff Hiller took over. Yeah, yeah. And he did it for a while, and he yeah. was wonderful. And then he did it again at the Studio Theater. Yes. In um, I've been following. Washington D.C., which is great. Yeah. So Drew has written another piece. Another solo show. Another solo show, very different, but in the same with the same with a lot of the same ideas uh, yeah. and the same sort of point of view. Um, called Happy Birthday, Doug. Yeah, are the and idea is it the general uh, the world of aging in the gay world? Yes, yes, let's, yes. Let's, yes. Sure. It's about it's about you know growing up as growing up becoming a man and and then what and then what's next? Sure. When, when, once you're what's your an adult gay? So this is called um, Happy Birthday. Happy Doug. Birthday, Doug, and it's Doug's birthday, <laughs> and Good. Um, in bright colors and bold patterns. It was the night before a wedding. I was a group of friends right. the night before a wedding, and Drew played one person talking to three others that you mm -hmm. never saw or mm -hmm. heard from in this uh he plays all the guests at doug's birthday so oh. he plays lots of roles cool and it is and i saw it in la uh i did not direct this one yeah, tom you're producing i'm producing this one with zach lax mm -hmm. uh the great tom detrinas who worked with us on bright colors and actually took uh filled in for drew when and whenever he couldn't be on oh, wow. okay. um so he's a wonderful performer and a great director he directed this this play and i saw it they're doing it uh i think at the blank in LA right now. Oh, okay. They also did it at um, Dynasty Typewriter, and they've done it a few places out there. And it's wonderful. It's just as funny and heartfelt as Bright Colors and Bold Patterns. And I just know that people are going to. So it's coming it up. to Soho Playhouse. Coming to Soho here Playhouse. Off Broadway. Off yeah. Broadway here. And we start uh, in a few weeks. Awesome. Yeah. You keep busy. I do keep busy. Do you just have like, is your date book just, do you just have things it in there? It does. For, like, get, it just keeps filling up. It, it, there are times when I think if, if anything, changes i'm screwed like if anything moves actually today i was just dealing with something i was like if that doesn't happen when it's supposed to happen right. everything will fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird when that happens well, i'm glad you made it here yes. oh no i well, would never have missed this thank you appreciate that and we're doing pride plays again oh yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about June. that and, yeah. uh, we did pride plays at the rattlestick last june right. for the 50th Which anniversary a series of readings we, of that's right iconic uh, 
Uh, it was iconic, Pieces new, of, how do you describe forgotten, it? Right. or not forgotten, but like, you know, yeah. uh, 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 under, uh, uh, underappreciated sure. uh, works from the LGBTQ theater canon. Right. Um, we did As Is, we did yeah. uh, Last Sunday in June, we did uh, a new play that Michael Benjamin Washington wrote called Blueprints to Freedom, we did um, last summer at Bluefish Cove, which was like the oh. seminal lesbian now play. That's going to Broadway. Going to Broadway. Going to Broadway. I'm not saying that it's because of our reading, <laughs> but I'm not saying it's not because of our reading. Uh, we did Brave Smiles by the Five Lesbian Brothers, which was uh -huh. hysterical. Um, we did a wonderful play um, called One Leg by Ari Knox um, about um, uh, these... Um, Hot dealers on bikes. The whole mm -hmm. thing took place on bikes. I mean, it was so cool. Yeah. It was so exciting. We had such an amazing time. And great actors got amazing involved. Amazing actors. Yeah. We did Some Men by Terrence McNally yep. with a cast of 50. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was very cool. And we did an all uh, trans, non binary, and gender non conforming cast of Our Town. Wow. I mean, it was, and it, we bit off a lot. And, and uh, we did five days at the Rattlestick, over 200 artists, um, 20 shows. It's crazy. So you're doing it again. So we're doing it again. And um, uh, we don't know what we're going to do yet. The submission's just closed. So I'm sorry if you're a writer and you're like, <laughs> too late. Um, but we have lots of so many submissions. And um, we're, we're wading through them. I'm trying to read a play every day. And um, we're going to start making some picks. And it'll be, the, it'll be the last week of June. It'll be right, right, in, right, right during Pride. It. At the rattlestick again. Yeah. You're making things happen, Michael yeah. Gary. I love it. Thank you. Hey, Caitlin. Yes. How are people online talking about it? Yes, definitely. All right, so... People Nicol are watching people this? People are yes. watching. I got real questions right here. Oh, my God. Yeah, so Nicolette says, I loved your performances in both Grand Horizons and Torch Song. What traits do you share with both Arnold and Brian? Ooh. Well, both in the same theater. Yeah. So we <laughs> share hallways. Staircases. You don't um, get the same dressing room. No, I don't get the same dressing room because I'm not the star <laughs> this time. <laughs> James Cromwell has my dressing room. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, did you leave anything in there? Uh, well, did, you know, is there like a signing under the table. I did have you? everyone sign the wall, but oh. they painted over oh. it. <laughs> That's fine. I expected it. Um, well, you know, uh, my character in in um, Grand Horizons, uh, he has lots of. He has. You know, he's alone. He he um, he he's got some intimacy issues. Um, and, and in, in a lot of ways, he is still in high school. Um, and so I don't think that I'm like that. But I do think if I was a high school teacher, as I was saying before, if I, if I ended up following that path of being a high school drama teacher, that I would have ended up quite a bit like him. Mm. And, and I would have been proud to, to, to be like that. Um, I also think if my parents, who've been, who are about to celebrate their 49th anniversary, wow. if next year they said they were getting a divorce, I think I would freak the F out. Like Brian is, yeah. So I think that's that's probably um, <clears throat> Arnold in Torch Song. I would say I have less in common with actually mm -hmm. than with Brian. Uh, he was such a hero. I think uh, Arnold was such a, a pioneer. Um, he was so un unashamed mm -hmm. of um, who he was and what he did and and what that meant. To, to the people around him and, and, and whomever he came in contact with. And that is something, even though like, you know, he, you know, I go on stage in front of 600 people every night and I'm on TV and stuff like that, there is still a part of me that, that is, you know, that, that, that is worrying about what other people think. I mean, uh, that, and, and I think that Arnold doesn't. And, uh, and, and I, I, w I, you know, I, I, w I see people, I see people on social media or or out in public or or you know and they just have no fear and and they don't care what and and I don't I I I'm getting wow it's getting real. Five o'clock is my emotional time. <laughs> this is what's happening. I love it. At about five fifteen, I cry every day. <laughs> um, but I think I think that that I I I got I became a better person mm. from playing Arnold or mm. a stronger person. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he taught me how to be less ashamed of myself or, or, you know, less, um, insecure, less, um, uh, less shy. Um, yeah. He rubbed off on you. His bravery. I think off so. I hope so. I, I, I do think it did actually. Yeah. I do think it did. I mean, I think when I, while I was playing him, I was hot headed and which is fun. Um, and that, you know, probably has worn off a little bit, but I definitely grew being that guy. Mm. 
The, well, it's interesting how the, the journey of being gay beyond coming out is a journey, right? Totally. I mean, it's so fascinating. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, and that, that play was from, you know, the, basically when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. um, and, and here I was as a man playing it. Uh, that, you know, there's so much mixed up in that, too. Yeah. The idea that, like, oh, wow, this is what, this is what a, a true pioneer was dealing with when I was just born. Mm -hmm. Right. I yeah. love it. Wow. Outside. Whew, that was great. We can do it. Let's end on this question. So Beth wants to know what advice. Beth level? Huh? Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe she has a secret account. <laughs> Beth? Uh, so Beth wants to know what advice do you have for theater kids who are just finding out they love theater in high school? Oh, that's oh. awesome. Oh. I, I, my advice is I would give this to people in high school, but also in college and, and, and people who are breaking into the world. There are so many ways that you can be part of the theater that you will not learn in school. Um, and that's not because the schools aren't doing their job. Mm -hmm. That's because there's just no way to teach them. Um, there's so many ways to spend every day of your life doing theater, working on theater, promoting theater, uh, showcasing theater, highlighting theater. I mean, look at all the people that work in this this mm -hmm. this building here. You're all part of the theater. And you're yet in high school, it's about the shows. It's about, you know, it's th 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 there's not a, there's not a high school Broadway.com or is there? <laughs> there <laughs> not should yet. be. That not tra yet. tracks all the casting in high schools. <laughs> 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 so and so's out because scheduling conflicts. Um, <laughs> but I think that I think that like I, I I know of I know a lot of people who I was in high school and college with who. Once they realized there wasn't really a path for them as an actor, they left. And I think that that's unfortunate mm. because, because it, you know, the, the people who, the, you know, the roles for whom uh, there, are, there are enough to make an actor, is that grammatically correct, <laughs> uh, are, are so specific. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many actors and there are not that many kinds of roles. Mm. There are not, a, in other words, there are not as many roles as there are kinds of people. Right. And so it, inv inevitably, only certain kinds of people find enough roles t to make a career. And, and, and it's so sad. And that's why, you know, sometimes people become giant stars for doing their own thing, mm -hmm. for creating their own work and their own content, because there's nothing else for them. They have to create their own content because nobody else is creating anything for them. And those people become big old stars uh, because th they, they know exactly where their sweet spot is. And then other actors, they are able to do lots of different things that, that are being created or the few things that are being mm -hmm. created or the one thing. You know, I mean, some actors do the same thing every time. And it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, that, character is, uh, that character that they do is so iconic, it can fit into any number of situations. But, but there are... Um, there are many, many ways of being a part of the theater, of being a part of show business that are exciting and fulfilling and just as important, if not more important, mm -hmm. than being on stage or the, being the director or being the set designer or, or whatever thing that is, is, is more niche. Mm -hmm. And my advice would be try everything. Do everything until you're busy enough that you can't. Thank you for that bonus wow. master class. Come on. <laughs> so well said. Ooh. Thank you. You should You're be welcome. a teacher. Maybe we should, we should like put you in a <clears> high <throat> school in the middle of the country. Maybe the Broadway.com high school. And <gasps> you'll be the teacher and okay. we'll make a reali reality show for I a year. I feel like this show's gotten picked up already. <laughs> I feel like we just got to pick Netflix? up. Netflix? My phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> We're already on. We, the connection. we got a second season. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Congratulations I love on Grand Horizon. Thank your, you. Your latest theater project. I'd love to see what's next. And everybody uh, look out for Happy Birthday Doug and the Pride Plays and yes. whatever else this guy has up his sleeve. Because... He's not going anywhere. Do you, you said on show people, you're going to die an old man on the stage. I so, hope so. Yes, that's the oh, dream. That's, that's the dream. That's what I would love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Talk to Pearl's son of Come From Away.